السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most gracious, the most merciful. If you lost your job because you were a thief and you went into another job and you stole more, the next time they'll jail you for 10 years. You're not going to get away with it. It will get worse. If you committed adultery and you, a marriage broke and you committed double that adultery in the next marriage, someone might just do something that is dangerous to you because they wouldn't be able to take it. We're not encouraging it, but we're saying it can happen. So in essence, when something wrong happens in your life, ask yourself, what was my role in all of this? If you don't have a job, but you are not looking for a job, you are to blame. I cannot sit at home and say, I'm making dua to Allah. Oh Allah, grant me a job. And I'm looking at the ceiling and suddenly the ceiling cracks and I'm smiling. The job is coming, mashallah. <laughs> Where is the job coming from? You didn't go up. To look for the job, you didn't move, you didn't talk to people, you didn't go every day for one year. You walk from place to place, please, I'm looking for a job, this is my CV, I, this is my experience, I need a job. Look for it, look for it, keep looking for it, subhanallah. Then, then you know, if you didn't get something, you say, oh Allah, I trust you, you are the best. I know that you are keeping me in such a beautiful position. Because I'm trying whatever you told me to try, but your decision has overridden mine completely. And Allah is the boss. So when you are to blame, you need to correct that issue that you are to blame for. Correct it. But when you are not to blame, you tried your best. And you know that subhanallah, there's nothing more that I could have done for this. Then you must know that Allah has made the decision that is the best for you. For example, you are looking for a job. And this is an example that happens to many people. A didn't give you a job. B didn't give you a job. C didn't give you a job. Don't get upset. Don't get angry. Smile every day. Believe that Allah is doing something good for you. D didn't give you a job. E didn't give you a job. F didn't give you a job. G didn't give you a job. How many people are not giving me a job? So Allah says, you know what? We want you to get a job with J because the salary there is going to be five times more than all of these. Or your business A didn't work, B didn't work, C didn't work, D didn't work. Allah says, you know why all of those didn't work? Because if they had worked, your income would have only been so much. But the minute we gave you E and you went into E, it flourished more than A, B, C and D. It flourished. Your, your, your profit was now a huge margin, subhanallah. Sometimes you lose your job in order for Allah to facilitate for you a better job. I know of a person who used to work for an airline. He lost his job. He started his own thing. A little while later, Allah gave him so much money that he purchased his own aeroplanes. Subhanallah. Had he not been fired from that place, he would have still been sitting there working for the airline. But when he released and he started his own thing, some time later, he started purchasing his own planes. He owns his own private planes, subhanallah. So when you lose something, I've given you the example of jobs because here in Zimbabwe, our slogan is jobs, jobs, jobs. I'm sure you've heard that. We hope that inshallah they come. But by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what I need to let you know is don't despair. Allah is in control. Don't look at things from a negative eye. If you yourself are trying, when you need to look at it negatively is when you are a negative person. There's nothing good about you. You are a liar, a cheat, a deceiver, a sinner. You're not interested in turning to Allah. You're not interested in halal. You're not interested in anything good. Then you ought to be depressed. Because whatever you are doing is depression itself. So don't complain I'm depressed when everything you're doing is depression. Like a man smoking something that he's not supposed to smoke and he's saying, I'm high. You are high because you made yourself high. That's what it is. You are depressed because you made yourself depressed. Why? You turned away from Allah. You are looking at things in such... You are living such a negative life. Looking at things in such a negative way. How do you expect positivity to come into your life? But if you are trying, then you must remember, with your trial, you will have trials in your own life also. Chosen by Allah. He has to examine you, test you. أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ أَن يُتْرَكُوا أَن يَقُولُوا 
آمنا وهم لا يفتنون. We read this verse over and over again, Surah Al Ankabut. Allah says, Does man think that he it's enough for him to say, I'm a good believer, I'm a true believer in Allah, then we are not going to test him? That is the time Allah will test you. I always give the example of a school. Do you ever see school teachers standing by the gate of the school, looking at those who are passing by saying, Hey, come here for your examination. Here is the paper. They never do that. Because that person is not enrolled in the school. Those who are outside the school are not tested with the examinations of the school. No. But the minute you enter the school, you will have to sit the exam. Otherwise, you cannot call yourself qualified at that school. The same applies to Islam. The same applies to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you declare you're a mu'min, Allah says, فَلَا يَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَا يَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ Allah will test you to the degree that He distinguishes between whether you are truthful or you're just a liar. If I say, I'm a mu'min, I believe in Allah. Allah says, okay, come here, let's test you. Right, we're going to take away this from you. Do you still believe in Allah? Yes. Okay, we will give you this. Do you still believe in Allah? Yes. Did it make you arrogant? No, you are passing. You are passing your test. Right, come back. We are going to take your child away. Right, the child passed away. Do you still believe in us? Yes, you're passing your test. Okay, what else will we do? We take away your leg, your health. We take away your wealth. Do you still believe in Allah? Yes, you pass your test. Right, now we will give you the most beautiful thing in the world. Did it make you arrogant? No. Do we are going to give you authority? Did it make you arrogant? No. Did it turn you away from Allah? No. Did it make you forget Allah? No. Well done. 10 out of 10 here is Jannatul Firdaus. You can now enter there. You have your certificate. That is Iman. That is Islam. Through the most. You are tested because you came in. So when you see those who are not mu'mineen, they will not be tested the way you are tested. That's the reason why the mu'mineen always, they will go through much more difficulty than anyone else. From the time of the previous prophets, look at Jesus alayhi salatu wasalam. May peace be on him. Jesus, what difficulty did he go through? He went through the most compared to everyone in his time. Look at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. What difficulty did he go through? He went through the most of all time. What, what difficulty did the other messengers go through? Yet they were the messengers. They were the chosen ones of Allah. They were the highest. They were the greatest. They were close to Allah. But Allah tested them too. And Allah did not need to test them. But Allah wanted to show us. And take an example of Jesus. May peace be upon him. The amount of difficulty that he suffered. The extent of it is such that nobody can say that if Allah tests you, he does not like you. No. If he tests you, he loves those who are closer to him with that which was bigger than what you are going through right now. So do not despair. But your duty is to keep trying. The minute you stop trying, you are lost.